everybody hear me now? Yeah. Okay, um, you might have seen on the schedule that Axel Hecht from Mozilla Corporation was supposed to speak in this slot, but two days ago he almost chopped off his finger, so unfortunately he, hadn't, uh, he can't make it. So I'm standing in for him. Axel was originally going to talk about Zool Runner, uh, so I'm going to take up on that topic. Uh, a bit about, my, about myself, my name is Brian King, I'm an independent consultant. Uh, I'm one of the volunteers and admins at mozdev.org, which is a Mozilla community site, a free site for hosting Mozilla projects. We provide tools for Mozilla developers. Uh, I also do some work for Mozdev Group, which is a commercial software services company doing Mozilla uh, applications and extensions. Okay, uh, let me see. I won't, uh, I've had enough technical problems, so I'm not going to fiddle around with anything else. Uh, this is the unofficial logo for Zool Runner. Uh, it was created by Ben Smedberg, Benjamin Smedberg, who's a module owner and main developer of Zool Runner. And this is a quote from his blog. Uh, it says, Atlas was condemned to bear the heavens upon his shoulders by Zeus as punishment for leading the titans in the war against the gods. So he thought this was an apt analogy for a bootstrap application like Zool Runner to hold up Firefox and other Mozilla products. Uh, whether you agree with that or not, I don't know. Okay, what is Zool Runner? Uh, it bootstraps XP Common Zool applications. It's a Gecko runtime environment. I'm sure you all know what Gecko is at this stage. Gecko is the main rendering engine of the Mozilla platform. Uh, what do you get with it? You get customizable executables, icons, profile. You get your own proce uh, process space, etc. Uh, it uses the latest toolkit. So the, the old Mozilla Suite toolkit is now more or less obsolete. It's still being used by the SeaMonkey project but most of the products have moved to the Firefox Thunderbird Sunbird toolkit. Um, it's still in development. Uh, there's just been the first developer release based on the 1.8 trunk of Mozilla. You could download it today. Um, it's maturing all the time. Where can you get it? Uh, you can get binaries uh, two, two builds of binaries, two types, uh, the 1.8 that I just mentioned, this URL. If you don't feel like writing that down, my slides will be available later. You can just email me or you'll find it on my blog. Uh, you, if you want to live on the edge, you can download Nightly Builds, just like all of Mozilla projects, Nightly Builds are available. If you want to be a bit more adventurous, if you want to tinker around with it, if you want to contribute, submit bugs, submit patches, you can build your own version of Zool Runner. Uh, it's a standard Mozilla build environment. I won't go into that here. If you download it from CVS, the instructions are on developer.mozilla.org. Um, be sure when you're checking it out um, to use the Moz CO project flag and specify the Zool Runner project. If you were checking out uh, Firefox, you would use browser. If you were checking out Thunderbird, you would use mail. Uh, you can check out multiple uh, pr uh, projects by just comma separating them. So if you want to, uh, if you already have a Firefox build tree and you want to add in Zool Runner to it, just do browser comma Zool Runner. You can't see it here. Um, let me see if I can make this smaller for a moment. Okay, just down at the You see. Uh, in your Moz config file, before you build, be sure that option is in there. Um, the default config, build config file is in the tree in the Zool Runner config directory. Uh, you can add other configuration options if you want to build extensions, uh, if you want to build modules that aren't standard, etc. But just make sure that that particular uh, setting is in your config file. Okay. 
So how do you, what is the structure of the ZooRunner application? What exactly is it? What's the directory structure? What are the files, etc.? cetera? Um, it's flexible up to a point, but this is, a, this is a typical structure. I'll show you the directory structure in a minute to make it clearer. But these are the things that you need, the pieces that you need. Uh, the application.ini file, um, this is the, I have, I have an asterisk there because it's the only part that's compulsory. This is the metadata file that tells vendor name, version, app name, etc. I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. Um, theoretically, an application can ship without any of all the other ones. You can have only components in your application, you can have only Chrome in your application. Um, you could take, theoretically, you could only have preferences too, but it wouldn't do much. Uh, you can have other miscellaneous files. Um, many Firefox extensions, for example, only ship Chrome. This is the front end CSS files, JavaScript files, Zool and XBL files. Components, that, was, would, where, uh, that would be where XBCOM components would live. So if, you, if you're familiar with Firefox extensions with the Mozilla Chrome structure, and this is not new to you. So um, here's, the, here's a, just a, the, the, the actual directory structure. Um, the application in that file that I mentioned, the Chrome manifest file, I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, Chrome components, so they're all on the same level in the tree. <coughs> Okay, um, if you remember back in the good old days, um, the Chrome manifest file for Mozilla application, or for Mozilla Chrome, was an RDF file, and it was a little bit abstract. You know, you had to learn uh, how to map your Chrome directories to use Chrome URLs internally in your extension, etc. It's a little bit more simpler now. It's just a, a, a flat file called chrome.manifest, um, and you have three flags, content, locale, and skin. Marup is just the name of an extension that I'm working on. Um, so whatever your package name is that your files are bundled in, the XPI file that is, you would put there. Um, and uh, where your content files are. The content files are your Zool files, your XPL files, and your JavaScript files, typically. So here I'm using a jar URL. You're, you're telling the Chrome registry to look for your content files in the jar file, marup.jar, in the content directory within that jar file. T similarly for locale, you specify ENU, ENUS locale. You can have multiple locales bundled with your extension uh, once you have multiple entries in this Chrome manifest. And the skin directory, um, there you have the, the skin name, identifier, and where to find the skin files. This is CSS files and images. Okay, the application.ini file. Your Azure Runner application will not work if it doesn't find this file. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, um, underneath the, the, the app uh, heading there, you have a uh, vendor. So you put your, um, your company name, for example. Uh, name, for some reason I don't have filled in there. That would be the name of your application. Uh, what version it is, build ID, there's no guidelines for what that should look like. You can have any build ID, uh, copyright, etc. Um, and then the bottom there you'll see under the gecko uh, heading, min version and max version. Uh, you should be careful of this because um, if you only want to target your application for trunk builds of Zool Runner, you would have min version of 1.9. Um, if you wanted it to be compatible with just the 1.8 version of Build Runner, you would have the max version of 1.8. So just be careful with versions at the moment. They're the only two real versions there are at the moment. Uh, 1.8 is the 1.8 Mozilla branch, and 1.9 is the trunk of Mozilla. Okay, so you've downloaded Zool Runner. I'll talk about uh, deployment at the moment, but I just want to look inside how, uh, uh, the internals. 
a little bit more for the moment. How does Zulrunner know which window to start? How does it know how to bootstrap your application, where to look for it? Uh, well, I mentioned earlier in the structure, in, in the defaults directory and in the preferences directory, you put a, a preferences file in there. This is just a, a .js file. Uh, it's the same structure as Firefox preferences, uh, um, Thunderbird preferences. If you go into your user profile in Firefox, you will see a prefs.js file. If you look inside there, you'll see the structure. Uh, so it's just pref, the name of the pref, and the value. Okay? So the important pref here is toolkit default Chrome URI. And this, uh, this tells Zool Runner that they should lo load this file here first, maroop.zool. We talked about Chrome URLs a little bit earlier when I said that um, you use chrome.manifest to map directories within your jar file or within your application structure to particular Chrome URLs that the application can understand to find files. Um, do you want to allow multiple instances of your application to run? Uh, you can turn it on and off via this preference here, toolkit single window type. Okay, so if you leave that out, multiple instances will be allowed. Okay, so we're, we're still setting up uh, at the setup phase. Well, registering Zool Runner. So you've downloaded it, you've unpacked it, it's sitting somewhere in your hard disk. Uh, you go to the Zool Runner directory and you run uh, this command here, Zool Runner register global. So this registers it on your system. If you only want to register for a particular user, and not for all users, you just uh, use register user instead. Okay. And what does that do? Um, it writes to uh, etc, uh, this file here, gre.d on Linux. And it writes uh, to the Windows registry in Windows. I don't quite know what it does on Mac. Okay. Any questions so far? As clear as mud? Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I was going to leave that to the end, actually. This is just more like an introduction to getting your Zool applications running. Uh, you've only got 15 minutes? No, uh, I mean, uh, through this 15 minutes, I don't know. It was uh -huh. hard, right? <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, it's, well, you'll see in a minute. Like yeah, okay. Well, yeah. Perhaps I should have reversed things. I was going to do demos and explain it a bit more. Just bear with me for a minute. Okay, so um, you want to deploy your application. Um, uh, you've downloaded Zool Runner and you have your application. The two things are quite separate, okay? You've got, you want to deploy it now. It's, it's, at the moment, it's not quite sophisticated. It's very, very kludgy. Uh, for Firefox at the moment, you can download an installer on, on Windows. You can download on Mac. Uh, uh, um, an archive on, on Linux as well, and it just installs for you. There's an installer on Linux too. But it's not quite so easy on, uh, for Zool Runner at the moment to get things set up. You can directly launch it from a flat Chrome structure, you can use the install app command, and you can bundle Zool Runner with your application in some sort of, uh, I don't know, compressed archive, and they can download everything together, the user. I'll explain those just a little bit more. Um, direct launch is from a flat file structure. That's if you don't put your Chrome files in a jar file. You just have the raw directories on disk. Uh, it's useful for developing and testing. It's probably not useful for production deployment of Zool Runner applications at the moment. It's probably better to use jar files, especially if you've got larger applications. Uh, so how, how do, what do you do? You run the command. Here's the command here, Zool Runner. And then you point it just to the application.ini file, and that will launch your application. 
Okay, the install app command, uh, this is the command you run here. Zool runner minus install app and then the path, and not to your application.ini but to your XBI file. Uh, typically, applications are distributed as XBI files like Firefox extensions, but they can also be zip files. You can, they can have any, uh, uh, once they're the right format, they can have any extension. Zool Runner would recognize them. Uh, there's the same command for Mac and for Windows. And also on that slide, you'll notice wh what does that command do? This installs the application, it unpacks it, and it installs it to these locations. So on, on Linux, it's user lib, vendor, and name. You'll remember those values from a few slides back. The application.ini file, when you put your uh, vendor and your application name in that <coughs> file. This is, this is where you need them for installation. Or you can bundle your own Zool Runner. Uh, have your own installer, it can be a native platform installer, it can be just a compressed archive. Uh, it has the Zool Runner files and your application all together. It can be commercial or custom installer, uh, so an archive and a free OS. Uh, there is no Zool Runner installer at the moment. Um, maybe if you, if you built your own Zool Runner from source and you had to make core changes, you had to give, put patches to it to make your application to work, or if you're bundling other libraries, third-party libraries with your application, this is probably a useful route to take. Um, has anybody heard of the Songbird media player? Yeah. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, this bundles its own Zool Runner uh, at the moment. So you're wondering, this is a Mozilla application, and uh, you can. You, uh, what can it do? What modules in the Mozilla tree? What functionality does it have? Well, Zool Runner ships with uh, most of the standard Gecko features, XPCOM, networking, uh, rendering engine. You'll get Zool, SVG, XSLT, XML extras, etc. History, accessibility. Uh, you get some UI features. Uh, you get the extension manager, find toolbar, etc. Um, obviously, you won't probably might need all these things in your application, but uh, some of them you might. Uh, it has embedding APIs, cross-platform embedding, POI, XPCOM, Java, XPCOM. Uh, these aren't all complete at the moment. Some of them are still. Uh, the integration is still being worked on. GTK Moz Embed, which is a Linux-only uh, embedding API. Okay, what maybe will be shipped, uh, the, the, the list isn't complete. Uh, LDAP might be there, spell checking might be there, profile roaming. Um, definites that uh, are not shipped, bookmarks and history UI, X forms, which you can get that as an extension. And I put the kitchen sink in there because um, there are just some things that, there are just some limitations of the Mozilla code base, which if you've ever used it, you're probably aware of now. You might have to use third, uh, your own libraries, third-party libraries, that you can either uh, write a, an XPCOM wrapper around it to interface into it, or uh, you can dynamically link to it, or some other way. Okay. So, um, sorry if that seemed a bit abstract. Uh, it was a good suggestion there by uh, this gentleman here that I should have done things a little bit backwards. I should have uh, told you a bit more what Zool Runner was, showed you what it looks like, what applications it runs. But I'll get to, I'm, uh, I'm getting to that now. Basically, Zool Runner enables the Mozilla platform. Now, many people uh, know Mozilla as just a browser, as just a mail client. Uh, you've got Chatzilla as well. You've got other products. You've got calendaring. But um, for many years now, nearly since uh, the Mozilla project was founded, especially third-party developers have been taking the code base and doing imaginative things with it. They've been building many, many different types of applications with it. Its current incarnation is extensions. Um, 
Firefox and Thunderbird extensions. There are some fabulous extensions out there that do lots of different things. But this is the next step to enable the Mozilla platform. Each application has its own user profile. It runs in its own process space. So if you want to have a complex uh, extension and you don't, you don't want to interfere with the browser, if your extension freezes up, well then the browser's gone too, right? Uh, if it crashes, Firefox crashes. Okay, so um, this, is, this is very useful. It ensures peaceful coexistence of multiple Mozilla applications on your machine. It enables the Mozilla platform. Okay. It's not all fun. Um, the Mozilla code base is, is very large and there's a perceived high barrier of entry. Uh, a large and daunting code base, dispersed documentation. Uh, a lot of people have been lamenting about this for many, many years. It was very, very hard to find developer information for Mozilla. Uh, now there is the, uh, the portal, developer.mozilla.org, and this is every, every day there's new content going on there, and it's getting much, much better. That should be your first stop. For developers, um, I won't say there's no tools, because there are. There's things like the JavaScript console, the DOM inspector, etc. Um, but there's no real integrated development environment. You have to patch things together to get a development environment. Um, to write the actual code itself, you just use your favorite text editor. Uh, there are sketchy supports in some areas. Um, for example, some web services, SOAP uh, is qu quite buggy. Uh, and if you're, if you're building an application and there's bugs, uh, you file them in Bugzilla, uh, they don't really get as much attention as the browser or mail bugs, which is understandable uh, because Mozilla Corporation, Mozilla Foundation, they're not focusing on the platform right, right now. It's not their number one goal. They want Firefox to get more market share. Um, they want a broader user base for Thunderbird. They're focusing on their core products. What other people do with the code is up to them. They will help out when they can, they will fix bugs, they will answer your emails, they will go on IRC and chat with you, the developers. Um, but if there's bugs to be fixed, uh, it's probably better to write patches yourself. And even when you do write patches, uh, to get them actually reviewed and into the tree, that's even more difficult in many respects. Okay, but it's not all bad news. There are many advantages of the Mozilla platform over other platforms. If we, uh, I'm not even going to try and compare it to uh, Java platform or GDK or Qt or I'm not going to compare it to Windows or Visual Studio because each has its own strengths and weaknesses. But I will say this about the, the Mozilla platform. Uh, quick prototyping. Uh, Zool, XBL, their simple XML markup. We're all familiar with markup. We can, uh, you know, once you know which widgets to use, you can prototype very fast. If you have a pet project that you want your boss to fund, you want to spend more time on, you can just spend an hour uh, making a nice user interface, hooking up a few functions, bring it to your boss and say, hey, isn't this great? Uh, within the Chrome structure itself, it's got great separation of content style and functionality. So you can have uh, multiple developers working on the project uh, all doing different things and you can put it all together very easily. Standard support. Um, Mozilla is very proud of its standard support and, and rightly so. Uh, it contributes to standards, it adopts standards um, and it's very strong in some areas. What do you have access to with the Mozilla platform? There's over 2,000 XPCOM interfaces. Uh, uh, file I.O. interfaces, network interfaces, web services, security, uh, anything that a web browser needs, anything that a mail client needs, you have access to all this functionality. It's all built in. Yes, there are things that your application might need to do that you'll have to write yourself, write your own XPCOM components. Uh, but uh, I know uh, if, if any of you were in the Mozilla developer room the last couple of days, you would have seen a lot of great applications that are just written in, in Zool, uh, XBL, and JavaScript. Um, 
You don't even need to interface with the XPCOM components. Um, okay, I, I mentioned the lack of an IDE, but there are, there is a growing tool set. Uh, Bugzilla, uh, LXOR is, is the, um, this is where you can view the Mozilla source code online. And uh, the DOM inspector, JavaScript debugger, and there's multiple uh, development tools on mozdev.org. And down at the bottom I have written, you can see it, an active and helpful developer community. Um, there's a new extension for Firefox called All Peers, and earlier today, Matthew Gertner, the, one of the uh, developers of All Peers, uh, he said this was the best resource. Uh, he started writing his uh, Mozilla extension uh, with no knowledge of Mozilla, and he said he, he was stuck for two months until he went on IRC and talk to developers directly. So maybe that's the best route. Uh, very, very helpful. Okay. Um, so, what's the next logical step to the Mozilla platform and then the Mozilla desktop? We already have it in many, in many respects. These are just some applications written on top of Mozilla. Uh, NView, uh, HTML editor, We've got Thunderbird, Firefox, uh, Mozilla Calendar. This is the Songbird Media Player. Um, um, but of those applications, only one of them is written on top of Zool Runner at the moment, and that's Songbird. I predict in a year that all of these applications will be running on top of Zool Runner. You will have one Zool Runner on your machine, and you will download smaller application bundles for each of these applications. Um, the, that's in the roadmap now on, on, for Mozilla. They want to port Firefox to Zool Runner. They want to port Thunderbird to Zool Runner. Okay. And if you're working on uh, if you're working on multiple platforms, uh, say you spend 50% of your time on Linux and 50 on Windows, like I do, you can recreate the same desktop in the same environment very easily. Uh, you can work with all the tools. Uh, uh, I, I, I spend most of my day between browser and mail client and text editor. That's all. I, that's three applications I have open most of the day. Uh, my code editor and um, you can recreate it uh, very easily on the three platforms because Mozilla is cross-platform, as you know. Okay, what applications are currently running on Zool Runner? Uh, Songbird, I mentioned, Chatzilla, uh, Zap, this was uh, previewed in the Mozilla developer room earlier today. Alex Fritze uh, is writing a completely open standard SIP client on top of Zool Runner. Uh, very, very impressive stuff. Um, and there's many, many more that we probably don't know about. I've had a few emails from people who said they're writing Zool Runner applications, but they didn't quite tell me what they were. Uh, some are in production, some are not quite sure if any are used are our mission critical applications at this point, but uh, uh, it's getting to the point where it can be used for those type of applications. There are other traditional Mozilla applications. Uh, I mentioned Firefox and Thunderbird, Enview, Komodo. Komodo is the uh, scripting language IDE that's uh, four or five years old now. That's not running on Zool Runner yet. Um, as I mentioned, porting these to Zool Runner is on the uh, roadmap for Mozilla products. Might be trickier for other products depending on their needs. So Zool Runner, if you have a Mozilla application right now, don't just say, oh great, here's Zool Runner, I'll move it over. There are a lot of porting issues. Uh, uh, not just, even when you move from one version of the Mozilla code base to another, there's a lot of porting. Uh, a lot of APIs are not frozen yet. Uh, Chrome restructuring, uh, many incompatibilities. So if you want to consider to uh, move to Zool Runner, do a bit of research first. Uh, do some prototyping, do some testing. So, um, what were the goals for Zool Runner? Uh, stabilize the APIs. So between versions, your application doesn't break. 
uh, have an installer for it. Um, we need more developer tools. Okay, if anybody uh, wants to donate pots of money to somebody to create a brilliant IDE for Mozilla development, we will ha happily take your money. Um, versioning system, this is something that's still being worked on. It's kind of tricky. Um, um, if you have your um, Zulu application that only works on 1.8, and then somebody downloads an application that only works on 1.9, what happens? Uh, does the person upgrade and your extension breaks and doesn't work? Uh, do you have two versions running on your machine? Uh, this sort of thing, these sort of issues haven't been resolved yet. Okay. Okay, uh, I'll hold off with questions for the moment because I want to give you a little demo. Okay, so can't see that very well. Okay, so this is, uh, let me see what we have in here. So here I've downloaded the Zool Runner 1.8 binary and I've installed it here. Okay? Just there, here's a quick peek of what's inside. Okay? You have some of your standard uh, Zool Runner libraries, you have your Chrome directory, your components directory. But don't miss for the Chrome and components of, um, of your application. This is the Zool Runner Chrome and the Zool Runner components. Okay? Um, you're from, it, it looks very similar to what's inside the Firefox install directory, for example. Okay, so I have a, a modified ch uh, Chatzilla XPI that runs on Zool Runner, so I'm going to install it now, and we'll see what happens. Okay. So you remember we talked about install app. So you have your. Uh, So there's the Chatzilla XPI, so I'm just going to install it. So, Can you make the text a bit bigger? Sure. Is the window a little bit higher? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Oh, I see the light. Now, as I said, it's very primitive. You have no fancy uh, dialog box that pops up and said, oh, would you like to install this application? Here's a shiny icon. Um, oh, you have a chance to cancel, etc. No, I don't want to install it. There's no feedback at all. There's absolutely no feedback. It's all command driven. It's, uh, most people in this room are very uh, um, familiar with installing applications from the, from the shell, but many users are not. Uh, so, it needs to be prettied up a little bit, it needs a UI, etc. So I've just installed the app. So can anybody remember where the install app uh, installs it? Exactly. Okay, so let's go there. Okay, uh, the vendor name, I just called it Zool Runner Test for now. There we go. And the product name is Chatzilla. So, what it did is it extracted the files from Chatzilla XPI and it slotted them in here. So let's see what it slotted in. So there's your application.ini that we talked about. Uh, actually don't know what's in the Chatzilla directory. There's your Chrome and your components and your defaults. Uh, oh, actually, Chatzilla is the, uh, the launcher. Okay. 
So before, if you've ever used Chatzilla, uh, it was either part of the Mozilla application suite or it was a Firefox extension. So it relied on other applications to run. This is a standalone application. This is a standalone Zool runner. Okay. Uh, so it's running in its own process and we talked about uh, profiles and preferences. Where does the profile and preferences go? Uh, whatever, wherever you have uh, your user directory set up, I'm logged in as root at the moment, so... Uh, um, so there we are. Uh, it uses the uh, vendor name for your profile directory. Uh, and inside you have your application name. So this looks very similar to uh, a typical Mozilla profile. This is what you've got inside. Okay, you've got your extensions directory. So if you if your application uh, has an extension system, that's where they would be installed per user. Prefs.js file uh, and Firefox in the location bar. If you uh, type about config, you can have access to the preferences via there. Uh, or you can directly edit the preface file. So, uh, there you are, you have your own user profile. Uh, if somebody blows away their uh, Firefox profile or their Mozilla profile, they'd also blow away your preferences, your settings, uh, your extensions. But in this system you have your own. It's uh, independent. Okay. Okay, I'll just uh, demo one more application. Okay, this is a little extension that I originally wrote for Firefox. Uh, um, it's called the Morella Uploader, and it's a picture uploader for a, a picture hosting site. Um, it specifically uses their API, but I was thinking of porting it to other public sites like Flickr to make it more useful and more accessible. It's, it's only a, it's a Slovenian language site. Um, so I just installed the app there. Let's go to user. got the uh, vendor name for this application. That's great. Uh, okay. No. Okay. Um, because I'm running out of time and I don't want to waste your time, uh, I won't demo that application, but you got the general idea. Um, you have all the power of Mozilla to create your own applications. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Over here. Uh, will Firefox 2.0 be a Zool Runner application? Um, I think the goal is, is within one year for it to be. So if Firefox 2.0 comes out before one year, it might not be. Uh, I don't quite know if 2.0 will make it. 
Uh, probably not, because there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, the router needs a user interface, for example, and an installer. Yeah. Uh, the question was, do you need to write all your applications in JavaScript? No, uh, the Mozilla code base, the components are written in C++. Uh, and you can write C++ components in your application. Uh, there's PYXPCOM as well, you can write Python components. But it's a bit trickier to hook that up. Um, um, the, 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 uh, theoretically, the XPCOM architecture is language agnostic. You can hook in any compiled language. But there's only bindings currently for Python and for C++. Okay. Yes, another question up here? Sorry, could you just be quiet for a moment, please? Sorry. What do you recommend as minimum RAM and gigahertz for running this uh, in rally and with speed? Say that again? What do you recommend as minimum RAM and gigahertz for running this in rally and with speed? Because the chat server was starting in five seconds. Um, yeah, that, it took five seconds to start because uh, it was the first time that the application was run and it was loading all the XPCOM components, it was creating the profile. Uh, on subsequent startups, it would be about one second. Okay. So it's any Mozilla application, even Firefox, the first time you run it, it takes longer because it's, it's registering all the components. Um, Whatever the minimum requirements are for Firefox, that should be the minimum requirements for your Zool Runner application too. Or if you've added, added extra features, it might be more. I think it's 512 megabytes of RAM. I don't know about hard disk space or processor speed. Any more questions? Up here? You don't have any guarantees right now. Yeah. Uh, I, I mentioned that uh, if you are upgrading to a different version, uh, you know, put aside a bit of time first, because there will be uh, uh, things that are broken. Um, the longer the time period since you've upgraded, the more likely it will be, bro be broken. Uh, but as it comes closer to release time, full release, public release, things will stabilize a bit more. It's still in developer stages. Okay, thank you very much.